5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is pst, their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. For most of human history, we had a pretty hopeless way of dealing with disease itself, especially when it comes to treatment of disease. So what I wrote here is most of human history, we had a hopeless way of dealing with treatment. This was, for example, I don't know what this treatment was for. I, I found this picture, I, f I thought it was quite appropriate. I don't even know what he's trying to treat. But the idea is, is that this, whatever his treatment is, it's hopeless. Like, it doesn't help. Because for a long time, we had no idea what disease actually was. So when we tried to treat it, we didn't know how to treat it. And whatever we tried didn't work, for most cases. And when I say most of human history, I mean from about 3000 BC, which is when we believe civilization started, to roughly sort of here, which is the early 1940s. So during this time, the treatment of disease was quite, was quite hopeless. So the treatment, which is, I'll explain what treatment means in a second, but treatment was quite hopeless. We didn't really know what we we're doing. We talked about it a couple of videos back, quarantine. What quarantine actually means, which comes from Italian, it means 40 days of isolation. And that was done during the bubonic plague, which often have, which happened roughly here. So somewhere in the mid of the 1500s, 13 to 1500s, that's when the bubonic plague happened in Europe. And people were told to stay away, stay in their ships for a certain period of time to make sure they didn't have the disease. That's what quarantine was. And we had quarantine, you know, we used quarantine for history for a couple of things, and we used bad attempts at treating disease as well for most of our history. And now I quickly explain what these different terms are because you need to notice these two terms for this video. Treatment. So if, if I say treatment, what I mean by treatment is these are six people. Red means they are infected. And if you are being treated, that means you're trying to remove the actual disease. So right now they are no, infected, but for example, if you give them medication, then we've treated them and we've made them healthy again. Right? So treatment, oops, oh, oh. Uh, so treatment means that we make it from you know, someone who's diseased, we try to remove the disease, remove the disease, or at least try to re remove or relieve the symptoms. So for example, if you have a virus infection, we can't treat it, we can't remove it, but we can give you sort of medication to try to relieve the symptoms. We can't remove a virus medication for treatment. Right, so treatment means we're trying to either remove the disease or we remove the symptoms. What control means is if one person is infected, so this person here is infected with a disease, we're trying to have ways that if this person is infected, we're trying to have ways that this can't spread to the other people. Right? So if it spreads, that means we have a epidemic, and it's bad. So we, we can use, for example, quarantine to make sure it doesn't spread from one person to the next. Right? So quarantine is a measure of control. We're trying to control the spread of disease. Someone's infected, but we're trying to make sure it doesn't infect anyone else. Now, these two terms are important, but you also need to know these two, these two terms. And I'll go over in a second why you need to know these two terms. Management and prevention. Management is often, for example, if someone who has, let's say, arthritis. Arthritis is if you have joints, which hurt quite a bit. If someone has arthritis when, arthritis when they're 40, that we can't remove arthritis. It's not easy to treat. It's possible, but it's hard to treat. Often we just give them a management strategy. We're trying to manage their their disease. We can't treat their disease. So they're going to have arthritis when they're 40, but they're probably also going to have arthritis when they're 70. But the idea of management is to try to make it, you know, as painless as possible. Try to give them as good a time as possible whilst they have a disease. This is usually for chronic diseases. So chronic diseases are ones which last for longer periods of time, don't just happen overnight, and don't just go, go away overnight. They, they happen over longer periods of time. So we use for chronic diseases, we use management. We don't use treatment. Treatment use, uh, is used often for ones which can actually go away again quicker. So for example, the, the, the flu virus, we can treat it by giving certain medication to relieve symptoms, but we can't manage it. Manage it is for chronic diseases. Prevention. Prevention means that if there is a pathogen causing, uh, sorry, a pathogen somewhere that it would cause disease, the idea with prevention is to make sure that it, 
can't infect something in the first place. So prevention means we're trying to keep everyone healthy. Right? So the reason why I need to know those four terms is because DOPLAN itself says students will gather and process information from and use available evidence to discuss the changing methods of dealing, so it says discuss is the verb, discuss the changing methods of dealing with plant and animal diseases, including the shift and emphasis from treatment and control to management and prevention of disease. So I mentioned earlier, for most of our history, we've only tried to treat disease. Treatment was, or at best, control, right? So current control, the example would be quarantine. I mentioned that during the bubonic plague, which was in the 1500s, we had the, you know, some form of, a pretty bad form of quarantine, but we have some form of quarantine. And we had these really bad treatments, which didn't work at all. But that's all we had. We didn't focus on management or prevention. We just focused on treatment and control. But as we gain more and more understanding of disease, also due to Koch and Louis Pasteur, we shifted from treatment to control to more and more to management. But something happened in between as well. We have in the 1940s, we had someone who invented penicillin. Now, penicillin was used to treat bacterial infections. So, so penicillin was used to treat, so this is its form of treatment, to treat bacterial infections. And as soon as we invented this type of treatment, our emphasis actually went to treatment. So during the 1940s, especially because it was time of World War II, so there was lots of war happening during that time, we wanted to make sure we have ways to treat disease. We weren't too focused on prevention or management. We just wanted to have people who get hurt in war, for them to have a medicine that treats their disease, that removes the actual disease, whatever it is, bacterial infection or other infections. So during the 1940s, we still had a pretty big focus on treatment. Even though we've already invented the vaccine during the 1870s, but treatment was still more or less the main focus. But then things, <coughs> sorry, throw is killing me today. But then things start to change a bit afterwards. So I'm going to go over that now, what happened. So this is a timeline, but this timeline is a bit more smaller. It's, it's a smaller focus. So the 1800s here, the 2000s here, and obviously we would be somewhere here now, 2012. Um, now what we have to focus on is prevention and management. Why did it go from treatment and control to prevention and management? Well, first of all, we have invented the vaccine in 1870. And the vaccine is obviously something which is really useful to help us prevent. So vaccines helped us with the prevention part. So we didn't have that beforehand, so we couldn't really prevent things that well. But once we started developing different types of vaccines, we could actually eradicate stuff like polio and everything else. That was quite useful. And also, there was a... So what I wrote here is... During the sort of 20th century, from 1900 to 2000, there was a huge shift, especially in the developed countries, such as Australia, America, and parts of Europe, where we had a shift from the infectious disease to non-infectious disease. What I mean by non-infectious, so again, we'll cover a couple of ones, such as heart disease, heart disease, cancer, etc. These are ones which often happen because of lifestyle, so they are lifestyle diseases, and they are also chronic in nature. So they are chronic. Before the 1900s, we had a very short life expectancy. So here, the life expectancy was generally in the, in the 40s, the 50s. But because of all this new technology, this new sanitation, we talked about public health programs in the last video, because all this new, new, new sort of public health campaigns, medication, vaccinations, we've managed to live a lot longer. So now we start to get, you know, many people living in the their 70s and 80s. And the infectious diseases weren't the massive problem anymore. But that means we, we couldn't use treatment anymore that well because we couldn't, you know, for example, heart disease, we can't just give medication and it will go away completely or cancer. At the moment, our medication does have its effect. But overall, these are often chronic ones which we need to treat through different different things. So, for example, one good um, thing to mention here might be, again, arthritis. Arthritis has to do with 
joints, joint pain. And the management plan would be, you know, medication, you get medication to relieve the symptoms, you're doing exercises on a constant basis for the rest of your life, and all of these are there to prolong your life. So generally management, one focus is to prolong your life, to make sure you can live longer, even with the disease, you're still going to have the disease, but you can live longer. Also to reduce suffering. Again, with arthritis, it's a painful thing to have. My mother has it too. But um, if you can manage it, it means you're going to have less pain. So you're going to have less suffering. So that's also the reason why we do management to reduce the suffering and to reduce the cost as well. If it goes untreated, if it goes unmanaged, so if it goes unmanaged, that means you know, you're going to have to go to doctors, to hospital quite often, which means the costs will be a lot higher. So these are some of the reasons why we go on to management as opposed to purely controlled and treatment. Because now we have these lifestyle diseases, which we didn't have for the 1900s. Now, why do we go to prevention? Why did we go to prevention? Why do we have the shift from control and treatment to prevention? Well, one thing I mentioned, we've got vaccines. These are really well sort of designed instruments that help us prevent disease. And also, it's also important to realize that, for example, using the penicillin, which I mentioned earlier, came about usually roughly in the 1940s, right? So that was penicillin here. And penicillin worked really well to begin with. Then we talked about antibiotic resistant, antibiotic resistance. And that's a generally a problem. So antibiotic resistance is generally a problem for all medications. We have to find more and more different types of medication to fight the same infection. So if we have ways that we, that we can prevent it, that means we can have less problems with the resistance because we won't be actually be infected with whatever we're being infected by, bacteria or pathogens. So the antibiotic resistance is one of the reasons why we were shifting to prevention because treating it means we're gonna have more and more things being resistant and we're gonna have to invest more and more money and time into making new medication. If we can prevent disease in the first place, that means a lot less stress on us. So it's another thing, another thing that helps us go to prevention is we talked in the last video about bioengineering. So for example, making BT crop that is resistant to attack from, from different types of pests. So bioengineering is something that changes the genetic makeup of a plant or animal that makes it resistant to disease. Uh, so if we can bioengineer, which we started to do sort of in the 1990s, 1980s, that's when we started to do it. That allowed us to prevent disease or disease as well, right? So that's another thing that came about only recently, which is why we're having more prevention. So bioengineering allows us to prevent disease. And another thing is the pesticides. Again, they were so erode early to mid 1900s. That's roughly when they were started to be used in the early to mid 1900s. And these pesticides are another thing that helps to prevent disease, right? So if we can kill the pest, that means we can prevent pests from causing disease. All of these weren't really in place for the 1900s. They all came about roughly during that time, which is why we have that shift now from treatment and control to management and prevention. Because some of the benefits from management as or from prevention is that it saves lives. So for example, your vaccines, they save lives. They Again, they can reduce suffering because if someone doesn't have the disease in the first place, that means they're going to suffer less. And they're also going to reduce costs. Again, if we can prevent, prevent the disease from happening, that means we have to use less doctor time, less hospital time, less medication time. We're going to reduce our cost, which is one of the reasons why something called, whoa, whoa, whoa. it's going, computer's going crazy. Um, one of the reasons why something called health promotion is becoming more and more important. Back in the day, it was all about doctors. Nowadays, health promotion is increasingly important because health promotion is all about prevention as opposed to treatment and that's becoming more and more important in our society today right so i'll cover the document again use available evidence to discuss the changing methods of dealing with plant and animal diseases including the shift in emphasis from the treatment and control to the management or prevention of disease and so back in the day before the 1900s most of the human history, we relied purely on treatment and control. Um, generally, we had really bad treatments, and the only really type of control we had was poor, poor examples of quarantine, 
not well established quarantine. But with increasing technology and advanced understanding of disease, we focus more and more on the management and prevention of disease. Some of the reasons why were because we started to develop the vaccines, which were good things that could help us prevent disease. We also had problems with our sort of antibiotics because the pathogens became resistant to the antibiotics, which means we had to think of something else. And often that means that if we can try to prevent disease, that will save us the threat of the pathogens becoming antibiotic resistant. Also, we had the bioengineering, which started to happen over the last couple of decades, which helps us to make resistant crops and resistant animals to disease, which helps us to prevent it because they won't have it in the first place. We also had the development of pesticides, which are there to kill pests. And if we can kill the pests, that means the pests can't cause disease, and thereby, thereby we've prevented the disease from happening. It's also been a pretty big shift from non-infectious from infectious to non-infectious disease, which means we've got more of these chronic diseases, which is why we've got more of this management happening now than we did beforehand. And some of the benefits were prevention helps us to save lives, for example, for vaccines, reduce suffering, because if you don't have it, that means you're going to suffer less, and reduce costs, because we save the cost of, of treatment. For management, again, it prolongs life. You're going to be, you're going to have a disease, but you're going to have a longer life generally, and also ideally, you're going to have less suffering so because the management plan has helped you to cope with your disease better and also reduce costs because you're going to have to go to the hospital and less and you're going to have more working days, you know, less sick days, etc. Et I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.